We are now going to be looking at section 24i, and this is how to calculate the foreign exchange gains or losses. So the first thing that you need to understand about section 24i is that section 24i's forex gains and losses are only calculated on the exchange items. So they are not calculated on the underlying transaction, only on the exchange items. Now, every single exchange item that you have in your question will have a forex gain or loss on it. So what are the exchange items? And you can find this in the definition of exchange item in section 24i1 and the exchange items are foreign currency, foreign debtors or creditors, forward exchange contracts FECs and foreign currency option contracts. The foreign currency option contracts guys, this is something if you are going to study it, you keep it until the end, not always, are not very popular at all. Most important ones that you cannot not do are foreign debtors and creditors and FECs. Very, very, very popular. So, section 24i, the definition of an exchange item, again shows us currency, debt, forward exchange contract, or a foreign currency option contract. So, what is the forex gain or loss amount that we include in our taxable income? So, they tell us in determining the taxable income, they shall be included in or deducted from the income, as the, as the case might be of that person, any exchange differences in respect of any exchange item. So you can see exchange differences on exchange items. And, and again, this is not as common for you to see, any premium or consideration that you paid for a foreign currency option contract or any consideration paid for the current foreign currency option contract. So this is if I have a foreign currency option contract. Now remember what a foreign currency option contract is. It's basically when I say to you, okay, you can t I'll sell you an option. So you can pay me 100,000 rands. And then I will allow you in five months times, let's say, to buy $1 million from me. And you'll be able to buy that at a price of 13 rands 30. Now, it might be that in that five months' time, that has now increased to 18 rands. So then, obviously, the person will not want to pay 18 rands. They'll use the option. But it might also happen that a slight miracle occurs, and all of a sudden, the rand is now 12 rand and to a dollar. And then the person would say, I'd rather just pay the 12 rands than the 13 rands 50. Okay. So basically, what I want you to see, it's an option that you can take out. Uh, it's a bit more complicated and not very popular, so I don't want you to spend too much time on it. But you pay a premium for it, so I pay someone 50,000 rands or 100,000 rands to get into, into that option. That will be allowed as a deduction. Okay, but for me, the most important, A. Now, when do we calculate these forex gains and losses? What has to happen for this to take place? I want you to understand that there are three very important dates that you need to be aware of. And if you cannot identify these dates in the question, then you cannot do the forex gains and losses. This is by far one of the most important sections. So, the first thing that you need to see is that there is a date called a transaction date. Now, the transaction date is the date on which the transaction took place. So, this is when the risk and rewards of ownership pass. You can see this definition in transaction and the transaction date in section 24i1 now guys the transaction date is if for example if i sell things free on board fob when it's put onto the ship okay our next one which is important is the translation date the translation date is the taxpayer's year and you can find this also in the definition of the word translate in section 24i1 very important that you see it translation date taxpayer's year and then we have the realization date. The realization date is when the foreign debt or creditor is paid, or when the FEC contract uh, states when it is payable, or when the holder of the FEC, uh, the option chooses to act. So basically, this is the moment that you've settled your debt, or you received your money, or you've enacted it. So after the realization date, this thing no longer exists, basically. Okay, and you can find that in the definition of realized. Now, what you'll see is, 
you will calculate a forex gain or loss every single time that you reach a translation date or a realization date. So the transaction date is the starting point. There's no forex gain or loss then. They'll say there, for example, it is 10 rands for a dollar. When it's a translation date, it is now 11 rands a dollar. Okay, so there's a forex gain or loss there, depending on if I'm a buyer or a seller. Okay, so exchange difference. What does exchange difference mean? Exchange difference means the foreign exchange gain or foreign exchange loss in respect of an exchange item in the EU of assessment, which is determined by multiplying such exchange item by the difference between the ruling exchange rate on the transaction date and the ruling exchange rate when it is realized or when it is translated. So you can see what they say. They say it is the transaction date rate and the difference between the translation date or the realization date. That is your forex gain or loss. So if I bought stock when it was 10 rands to a dollar and it is now 15 rands to a dollar, and let's say I bought 100,000 rands, let's see what this section says. It says take the exchange item and multiply it with the difference between the ruling exchange rate on transaction date, so that's, and the date when it is realized. All right, this is what I'm using here, 15 rands. So the difference between those is 5 rands. So that is the difference. We need to multiply it by 100,000. So 500,000 rands. So is that a gain or a loss? If I purchase stock at 10 rands, and now I have to pay 15 rands, it is a loss to me. Or it can be the ruling exchange rate, which such item was translated at the end of the immediately preceding year. And you compare the difference to the when it is realized or when it is translated. Now what they mean here, is let's say this is year end, and this is transaction date. And over here is when I realize it. What they're saying is, if a translation transaction date was 10 rands, at year end it is 12 rands, and at realization let's say it's 15. You will calculate the forex gain or loss up to year end, so there's a 2 rands loss if it is a payment, and then from when it is realized, you don't say 15 minus 10, no, it's been translated, so it's a difference between year end and when it is paid, so 3 rands. That is what this section says. So the first section A refers to the situation between transaction date and year end. That's what A does. And B in blue refers to the period after year end, basically. Okay, so just to show you in a simple example how this works. X Limited purchased $10,000 of inventory from a supplier in the USA. It was loaded FOB on a ship on the 15th of November. So you need to be able to see that that over there is our transaction date. It arrived at the warehouse on the 20th of November. That's fine. That means nothing to us. On the 25th of November, they paid $3,000 of that $10,000. So this is a realization date for the $3,000. The balance was settled on the 25th of January, and they've got a December year. So you need to see that this is a realization date also for seven or for the 7,000 rands, and at year end, this is the translation date. Now, I want you to see that they can give you lots of dates. You need to be able to identify it. So if you look in our question, here's the 15th November, and here's the 25, 25th of November. So... That is that 3,000 rand. So I'm going to just put in some random spot rates for you guys here. So let's say it was 10 rands on transaction date. And on realization date, it is 12 rand. So have I made a gain or a loss? Because I'm going to be paying, you have to ask yourself, I thought I was going to pay 10 rands, but now I'm going to pay 12 rands. Does that make me feel good or bad? It makes me feel pretty bad. So that is a loss. So I want you to see the Forex loss is going to be calculated as 3,000, because that is the only portion that's being realized at that point in time, times 12 minus 10, 
and that gives us 6,000 rands forage loss. I always take the latest spot rate first minus the older one. Now guys, don't be foolish and now look at this and go 12 minus 10 is positive, so positive times 3,000 is 6,000 positive. No, you need to reason it out. So like I did, you thought you are going to pay 10 rands, now you're going to pay 12 rands. The difference between that, that is a loss. Obviously, you can't just do the calculation and say it's positive. That's no thinking process. And if you don't think, you can't be a CA. Right. Then at year end, this is the translation date. Let's assume it was then 13 rands. Now, at year end, we only have $7,000 outstanding. Again, our exchange rate has deteriorated. So, again, it is a forex loss for us at that point in time of 7,000 times. 13 minus how much? Okay, so this is where I'm trying to trick you. It's not minus 12, because that 12 is only for the 3,000 that was already translated. This 7,000 rands, which you've not yet paid, the last time we recognized it was when it was worth 10 rands. So it's 13 minus 10, so 21,000 rands loss. And then the realization date and the beginning of the next year, Let's say it is now worth 8 rands a dollar. So now it goes from 13 to 8. So that is a positive 5. We spend less. So this is going to be a forex gain for us. And it's going to be the 7,000 times 8 minus 13. Again, can you see that's negative? But it's not negative because we have to reason it out. We thought we are going to pay 13 rands. Now we are going to pay 8 rands. We better off. So we've made a gain. Right. And that is... 35,000 rands. Okay, so that is basically how that thing works. So how do we know which exchange rates we should be using? We can find this for each of the exchange items. Right, so there's a definition for ruling exchange rate. You'll see my order here is a little bit off, but I've done it specifically in a certain way. So I'm going to start with a foreign currency. So foreign currency says, to do this calculation we just did. So we're asking the question now, how do we know which of these spot rates must we use? What are those amounts we must use in our calculation? So I say for foreign currency, on transaction date, use spot rate. On translation date, use spot rate. On the realization date, use spot rate. So you can see here, you always use spot rate. If it is a foreign debtor or a creditor, which are we going to use? On transaction days, spot rate. On translation date, spot rate. On realization date, spot rate. Okay, so as you can see again, it is spot rate. And then for a forward exchange contract. Now remember what a forward exchange contract is. If I, I take out a FEC, or let's call it a four-month FEC, At the rate of 1 rand equals, well, let's actually do it a little bit different. At the rate of $1 equals 10 rands. And this is on $3,000. All right, so I take out an FEC that says in four months' time, I will pay 10 rands per, per dollar for $3,000. So what does this mean? This means it's a contract I've entered into. Four months from now, I must pay 30,000 rands. I have no choice. It's a contract that I've taken out. I must pay 30,000 rands. Now people do this because they're worried that instead of 10 rands, in four months' time, it might be worth 12 rands. So they're not better off because I'm still paying 10 rands instead of 12 rands. So this is normal FECs like you guys have studied so far. Okay, very, very, very important that you just see that. Um, so it's a contract that fixes the exchange rate. Obviously, things might go well, and all of a sudden, the, ex the actual spot rate is 8 rands, and I'm paying 10 rands, but then it is a loss for me. So what do we use for a spot rate or for FEC exchange rate? So for a forward exchange contract, we say on transaction day, you will use the forward rate. The forward rate is this amount in the contract. On the date it is translated, so translation date, you must use a market-related forward rate for the remaining period 
of such FEC. You'll see here they didn't talk here about an affected contract. Guys, affected contracts are also uh, quite a bit more complicated, not very common. So for now, I just want you to ignore that. And then when it is realized, you will use the spot rate. So see at year end, translation date, you use a market-related forward rate. Now what does that mean for us? Okay, just to show you. So let's say we've got a December year end. On 1 November, I take out a four-month FEC that says $1 is going to cost me 10 rands in four months' time. So when am I going to pay it? November, December, January, February. End of February, I'm going to have to pay it. Now, when I want to calculate my price gain and loss, at year end, there's a trans it's a translation date, remember? Now, you have to, between transaction and translation date, you need to calculate a price gain or loss. But what rate am I going to use at year end? They tell you that you must use a market-related forward rate for a remaining period. So what does it mean? It means at the beginning of November, there were four months left for this FEC. At the end of December, how many months is left? Two months. Two months, November, December have already passed. We've got January, February left. They then say you need to compare to an FEC with a two-month period. Why? Because that is a similar remaining period. And that is what this section talks about. And that is it for the basics. If you can understand this, you should be able to answer the majority of the questions.